Okay, guys, I'm here working today on my Techniques SX PX30. Now, they made two models of this particular type, and one is a PX20 and the other is a PX30. And from what I gather, the difference is the wattage in the speakers. My particular unit, uh, if you go to the specifications back here, show that the uh, speakers, the output on them, they're uh, two of the exact same speakers, and they are. Uh, it's a 30 watt output versus the 20 watt output. Uh, here you are, 30 watt times two, and then the other one was 20 watts times two. So hence the the 20 and the 30. So anyway, I bought this unit, and it's, it's been a very reliable uh, unit for me. I'm trying to learn how to play the piano, and this is an 88-key weighted system. The only problem that I've actually had with it is uh, the polyphony in this is only, I think, a 16, 16 polyphony. Let me verify that. Uh, yeah, 16 notes polyphonic. So... Uh, if you're familiar with what that means, is that when typically you can only, since this is an electronic piano, uh, when you play more than 16 notes, you're going to start to lose notes. Now you say, well, how can you do that? Because you only have 10 fingers. What happens is when you press the sustain button, you are holding those notes for a, a period of time. And if you're playing fast songs, uh, you do lose some notes. It's not real noticeable, but I think for a trained ear, you could probably hear it pretty well. Uh, regardless, I like the unit. I like how it feels. The price was right on it. But the problem I was having with this was the speakers were starting to rattle. And <clears throat> after a lot of work, I figured out how to get the speaker, get this top off. This top actually, let me sh see if I can show you here. This is just a cover for that speaker. So that top hinges, and it just hinges back. If you grab it, you have a couple piano hinges here in the back on it. There's four screws that you have to remove, and one is right down here, okay? And, of course, the other one on the opposing side. And then there's one in the back, or two in the back, I should say. So let me show you in the back here. Right here... There, that middle one. So you have to take that middle one out on both ends. That one and the one on the far end. And then if you get up underneath this thing, let me see if I have enough light to show you. Okay, up underneath here. Let's see if I can get in here a little bit better and adjust that. So there's a, there's a washer right here, and that's where the screw was at. Here's your corner. So it's straight across from this speaker grill. There is a long screw in there, and it has one of the washers that have the tangs on it that actually embed themselves in the wood. And there's a couple other ones of those out here, so don't get the wrong one. You want the one straight across from the speaker. And the same on the opposite side. So there's those two screws, and then the two in the back that I showed you. So four screws, and then this whole thing just hinges and pivots back. So don't remove a lot of these screws in the back here because it bolts other things on that'll cause you problems. Uh, you'll have to eventually put them, put the screws back in and try to realign stuff. And you don't want to have to do that. So anyway, back to what I was saying, the speakers were rattling. I finally got this apart and removed the speakers. And the speakers are a technique speaker. These are the speakers. And these speakers are no longer available. And what was going on, at least what I thought was, the foam on these had de deteriorated. So I bought uh, a kit to repair those, and that's what I did. I re-foamed those, and I thought it did a pretty nice job on them. I got good contact everywhere. I was happy with it. I had to remove this uh, phenolic uh, concave washers around here, four pieces. I had to remove those. That, that was kind of a pain in the butt and then re-glue those back down. But I thought I had a good job. Anyway, long story short, I put the uh, speakers back in the unit, and it sounded as bad as it ever did. So <clears throat> rather than trying to figure these speakers out, I'm not a speaker expert, I went ahead and, and 
located new speakers that are made by uh, Visiton, and they're BG-17s. They're a 40-watt speaker with a maximum of 60 watts input in them. And those actually have the same bolt pattern, or if it's not the same, it's close enough that it fits. So I put purchased those, and I got those for about 40 bucks a piece. So I got about $80 in those. And the only problem is that the one spade terminal on them, and I believe that's the positive side, is a larger uh, spade. I think it's a, what they call a 4.8. 4 and what these are is a 2.8 millimeter. So I had to order some uh, some spades to make myself a little adapter wire. And those, ha that, that's, uh, those spades haven't come in yet, so I'm waiting on them. So I just kind of taped them on there just to get me back up and running. And... They sound great. Uh, that fixed the problem. But if you're having that rattling problem and you need to replace those, this is a nice solid unit. Uh, the keys work wonderful on it. So it's probably, for me, it's worth the 80 bucks for the speakers. Now, I did waste about 20 on the refoaming kit. But that was an error. I should have just bought the speakers and been done with it. Anyway, so that's where we're at. I'm waiting on those terminals to come in. I can still play it just like it is. So, and once those terminal comes in, I will put that back so that I get a nice job on that. Bolt these back up, put the four screws back in it. And there is a, uh, something I didn't mention. There is a uh, key cover that flips down here. And that is actually over here on the floor. And that has... Let me show you how that comes off, in case you don't know, because it's a little tricky. So this one side here, each side has a pin. That side is fixed. The other side, however, if I can get it in focus here, this side has, has a little catch on it here. And if you get a hold of this with a screwdriver, you, that's spring-loaded. You can pull this this way, and that, that'll push that. So you can see, I can push that in. See it moving with it? So, basically, that is on the left side of the unit in the hole over here. I can see the hole right here. So, you just pull on that this way, and then lift that up a little bit, and then you can slide the whole unit out to your left. And then that allows you to get this top off. You can't take that top off until you remove that. So... I wanted to add that in. Anyway, I hope that helps you. If you have any questions, uh, ask them in the comments section below. And I'll catch you next time, guys.